Now, C-SPAN's freshman interview with Representative-elect Tom Garrett. In November, he was elected to represent Virginia's 5th District. Representative-elect Tom Garrett, Republican, representing Virginia's 5th District. Tell us about your background. Well, I, I grew up in uh, rural central Virginia and uh, then uh, paid for college uh, using a military ROTC scholarship, served for about six years on active duty in the Army and then uh, went to graduate school and uh, spent my time following graduate school as a prosecutor and then uh, had the opportunity to serve uh, as my local elected prosecutor and then ultimately in the Virginia Senate and here we are. I've got two wonderful daughters and a great wife and just blessed to have the opportunity to serve. How many years in the Virginia Senate? Five. And what would you say you accomplished in those Well, you years? know, it was funny, and I, I think it's a good lesson, to, you know, bringing here, and that is we came in sort of as a fiscal belt tightener, um, you know, uh, sort of expending funds that are appropriate at each role of, or appropriate for each level of government. But we left, and if I had to tag a legacy, I'd say K-12 ed reform, um, you know, um, having been able to stand up in some areas where perhaps uh, doctrinal conservatives might not have showed a pretty decent libertarian bent, um, carried the bill to repeal the crimes against nature law in Virginia where the, the state government told adults of consenting age what they could and couldn't do in their bedrooms. It felt like that was ridiculous. And um, So, you know, I guess with the K-12 ed reform thing, I would tell people, you know, sometimes you come with a passion and sometimes your passion finds you. Um, and that was something where we identified, we thought, shortcomings in the system. We have wonderful public schools in Virginia, but, you know, we shouldn't be comparing them to the other 50, 49 states. We should be comparing them to the world. So fourth or fifth best in the nation is great, but it's not as good as we want to be. And so you identify those problems as they present themselves and then try to try to figure out good ways to tackle them that are within the appropriate role of government at whatever level you're working at. Why did you decide to run for a House seat? Y you know, ultimately the odds of being born in the United States are 1 in 26, plus or minus. And, uh, the odds of being born in the United States to a you know a, a two-parent household uh, with some discipline and encouragement. Yeah, I've been very, 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 very lucky. Um, as a prosecutor, I oftentimes would stand across the dais from usually a young man who was no different than me, but had had different influences earlier in life. And so I feel like, you know, from whom much is given, or, or to whom much is given, from whom much is expected. Sort of that uh, if I feel like I'm you know, holding strong opinions and I'm right on issues and I can do something to influence those issues to sort of hand that mantle of an equality of opportunity to young people moving forward, I'd probably be remiss not to try. Um, and so there it is, right? And you're perpetually humbled in, in the 5th District of Virginia because Jefferson lived there, right? There's the father of the Declaration and then Madison was the first congressman, so there's the Constitution and John Marshall retired there, Patrick Henry. Uh, Barbara Johns really started the civil rights movement in Prince Edward County in, in, in 1952. Um, and so uh, great appreciation for the wonderful work done by, by people like that who preceded us causes you to want to try to perpetuate that for the future. Where did you grow up and what were your influences? I, I grew up in Louisa County, Virginia, which ironically enough is in the 7th District. Um, it, you know, uh, I loved history. I studied history in college. Uh, my father, the decisions he made, my mom was diagnosed very early on in my life with uh, what was thought to be terminal cancer. It was before the internet. And my father would stay awake, dialing phone number after phone number. The Mayo Clinic wouldn't take her. Johns Hopkins wouldn't take her. MCV wouldn't take her. UVA wouldn't take her, ultimately. This is, I mean, Dad just doggedly pursued finding an, um, a place that could treat my mother. She just celebrated her 73rd birthday. Um, ironically, we lost my dad a few years back, um, but that sort of determination and persistence, um, and then when you decide that something's right, that the right thing to do is X, Y, or Z, then just, you know, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead and doing it. Um, you know, my first cousin, ironically, who was, uh, who, 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 I think turned down some baseball scholarships to go in the Marine Corps, people like that who had opportunities and delayed those opportunities to, um, serve something bigger than themselves. And then when I served in the military, looking around at, again, the women and men with whom I served, who, um, you know, anybody who serves, you guys had Brian Mast on earlier, has really agreed that there's something in their lives that's bigger than them, that's worth sacrificing for. So to be around women and men like that, um, and then, you know, then when you're having a bad day, you think everything in perspective is not so bad. Um, so those were things that sort of shaped who I am, who I want to be, right? I tell my children, um, it's not really about who you are, it's about who you want to be. You're not who you want to be yet. If you are, you're probably ready to go. Go on.
one. And so if you if you identify who you want to be and you take steps to be that person, then you should be able to look in the mirror and be happy. Any piece of advice that, that um, stands out to you from your dad uh, over the years that you sort of carry with you? You know, just, just you know, this may be not be politically correct, but I mean, I, I, I have no, and I inherited from my father. I have no admiration or tolerance for somebody who quit. If what you're doing is right, and, and and you're doing it for the right reasons, and you get knocked down, so what, right? The successful woman or man is the one who's gotten up one more time than they've been knocked down. And my dad was persistent and dogged and 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 tenacious and those are the sorts of things I mean like if you think about Dr. Martin Luther King right and what he went through and the people who, whose names we don't know went through you just keep coming back and um, legislatively in the State House of Virginia we did that with some bills where you know I knew what was going to happen but we moved the ball a little bit f further each time around and that's a that's a good character trait. What will you be dogged about here in Washington? You know we, we, we ran on a, um, on a um, student security sort of proposal that um, that would allow young people with student loan debt to choose to defer receipt of Social Security benefits in, in uh, exchange for forgiveness over a period of time for, of student loan debt. What that would do is make our Social Security promise to our seniors solvent for perpetuity and allow young people, if they chose to and only if they chose to, um, to so help erase some of that student loan debt. Well, you know, look, it's a winner all around because you've taken an entire generation out of um, the producing class. You don't start a small business if you got student loan debt. You don't buy a house, you don't buy a car, you don't get married. To paraphrase Ms. Clinton, you don't move out of mom's basement. And I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. So it's a real problem. And, uh, and you know, that sort of innovative thinking that I think, you know, candidly, I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to find people across party lines. Because it doesn't make anybody do anything, right? You choose to enter the program. And it doesn't change the benefits that, say, my mother receives, which, she, you know, you don't break that promise you made yesterday. You change maybe the, the, the setup for tomorrow. But, but that sort of thing, I mean, to, to, to know when it's over with, we've made a mark. We moved the needle. Nobody's going to remember me, but they'll remember what we did while we were here. And that's what matters. Well, Representative Tom Garrett, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Great to meet you. Nice